So currently in Seville, residents are unable to drink the water from their tap due to high levels of nitrates. Mm -hmm. Nitrate is, uh, you know, very common in this area. So over 90% of the valley communities rely on groundwater, and yet in Tulare County alone, 20% of the public water systems are unable to provide safe drinking water on a on a daily basis, almost all entirely due to nitrate. In the San Joaquin Valley, dozens of small communities like Seville are struggling with polluted groundwater. Two leading sources of this pollution are nitrogen fertilizers from farms and manure from dairies. What makes these water problems especially ironic is that while many farm workers around here can't drink the water from the faucets in their homes, the farms get pristine water delivered by canal from the Sierra Nevada mountains. Most of the communities that I work with are you know, unable to drink the water from their tap because of high levels of nitrates, but nitrate is not the only contaminant that we see in our drinking water. Uh, other contaminants are arsenic and DVCP, which is a pesta, a pesta that was banded back in the 60s, but mm -hmm. continues to be present in our in our drinking water. Um, and these contaminants, you know, they're pretty uh, dangerous and have uh, uh, very serious health impacts if people consume this water. Only about 10% of California's population lives in the San Joaquin Valley. But in recent years, the valley has been home to nearly two-thirds of the state's residents whose water systems violate federal nitrate standards. In towns with bad water, people have little choice but to buy bottled water or expensive filters. In one community studied recently by the Pacific Institute, spending on water came to almost 5% of median income. And the cost of a long-term fix is often out of reach. Even for a small community like Seville, which has only 350 residents, a new well and the plumbing to go with it would run more than $2 million. Grant funding is available from the state, but there's usually a very long wait. Majority of the communities I work with have been waiting for over 10 years. So it's not something that happens right away, but it does, you know, most of the time it takes years before we see some, some funding. Until recently, we didn't know much about the demographics of the valley communities that are exposed to drinking water contaminants from polluted groundwater. Switzer fellow Carolina Balash is answering those questions. That we know anecdotally that these problems are occurring in all the systems, and uh, what I bring is sort of the, the tools to look at this at a regional level and look if there's spatial trends and statistical trends in disparities and exposure to the drinking water contaminants. In my, the nitrate contamination study that I looked at, what we found is that um, systems that have higher percentages of Latinos have higher nitrate levels. Mm -hmm. um, and in particular, after you control for size, it's in the small systems where we see the biggest relationship, the biggest correlation between percent Latino and um, nitrate levels. So mm -hmm. those small systems is where you see like the strongest effect of being sort of um, a highly Latino community, you mm -hmm. see evidence that you'll have higher nitrate levels. All water systems are mandated to sample their water quality and report the results to Department of Public Health mm -hmm. or counties. Mm -hmm. okay. And the counties or Department of Public Health then look at those levels to say, are you over the level or not? Mm -hmm. And what, what I, my point was to say that really the, the way the Safe Drinking Water Act is set up is to just say, are you in compliance or out of compliance, mm -hmm. contaminant by contaminant? Mm -hmm. And what I've done is said, okay, let's take this data that's meant for a regulatory purpose and let's look at it to see if it can estimate exposure in the community. Mm -hmm. And then let's, let's estimate what the demographics are of water systems mm -hmm. and let's see what's the relationship between demographics and exposure. Okay. And so, like from my perspective, if you're Department of Public Health, we should be asking who's exposed mm -hmm. and who's vulnerable, not mm -hmm. just is the system in or out of compliance. Thanks to the work of local residents and community activists, Seville has become a well-known example of the sorts of water problems faced by small communities in the valley. While nitrate contamination continues to increase, there's reason to hope that conditions will improve in the future. This April, for instance, the state is expected to enact its first controls on groundwater pollution from irrigated farmland. Pretty much ag has been exempt for a number of years, and we're beginning to see the regional water board kind of move in the direction of 
developing programs and including mm -hmm. groundwater and a lot of the regulatory programs. And that's where we've seen a lot of the pushback in terms of, well, do they want to be regulated? No, they mm -hmm. don't. And they point to the cost that it's going to cost on them. But I think, you know, they also need to recognize that our communities have had costs and have bared the cost of the contamination for a number of years. This is Switzer Network News.